I was recently in Cincinnati, and I, I, I chose to go to the Creation <gasps> Nest Museum. Yeah, some of you are familiar. Yeah, I, yeah it's the Creation Nest Museum. And it was about 30 miles away in Kentucky, and uh, I did a little research, and it was, I needed to go. I needed to, to go for the wrong reasons, <laughs> obviously. But I needed to witness. I needed to, to go to this tabernacle of ignorance. <laughs> And I went there thinking, I'm going to go there. I'm going to be you know, horrified, you know, and, you know, angry, smug, condescending, righteous, you know, pompous even. And just judging these fucking idiots that are going there for what they see as the right reason. I knew I was going for the wrong reason. And I got there and right away I walked in and I was like, this is pretty cool. <laughs> A lot of money went into making this. They're really selling. This is you know, it, it just a, a tabernacle of, of Christian creationist propaganda. And, and, and people flock to it. And the only thing they're trying to establish in that museum, the only thing, it's not about Jesus. There's literally hardly any Jesus. The only thing they're trying to establish is that at one point in time, human beings and dinosaurs could hang out. That's the only thing. That's the entire agenda. That at some point in time, a person could go, come here, boy, come here, boy, to a fucking dinosaur and say, you want a carrot? Here's a carrot. Why, she eats carrots. <laughs> they believe the world is about 6,000 years old. Now, human beings as we know them, or roughly, you know, they probably you know, really kind of came about about 250,000 years ago. Dinosaurs that they're talking about, probably about, what, 300 million years ago. All right, so the gap they're trying to close is a good 300 million year gap <laughs> that they're just trying to close up with pseudoscience and interesting dioramas. <laughs> Now, I know in my heart there are people going there that are actually on the fence. Like, I don't know about this. <laughs> and they walk out of that museum going, I, pretty clear to me. <laughs> that one diorama, I don't know how it could be more clear. <laughs> I actually didn't get really upset about the agenda of the museum. What upset me more than anything was this one room where it was sort of a display room, you know, about the Old Testament and the New Testament. And they had these audio animatronic uh, dolls that were lifelike, lifelike. And you walk into this room and on the left side of the room, you had Isaiah, the prophet. You had Moses with his commandments. You had Abraham who was pensive and sitting for some reason and had a harp-like instrument. I don't know why. <laughs> and they couldn't have looked more Jewy. <laughs> and it was offensive to me <laughs> as a Jew that doesn't believe in any of this shit. But I was like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> I mean, it might as well have been Sid Caesar, Gabe Kaplan, and Richard Lewis sitting there. <laughs> And then the black should have rent Jews from the past. <laughs> Literally, it looks as though Moses should have had both tablets in one hand and a bagel and schmear in the other going, why not? <laughs> and Isaiah should have been saying, enough with the food already, always with the food, enough. And Abraham should have just been sitting there going, please stop fighting again and again. It's offensive because I knew it was true because when you turn the corner and go to the New Testament side, they have the Apostle Paul, who is sitting patiently, solemn, thoughtful, look like Ben Gazzara. There was, there was nothing about him that revealed any Semitic DNA whatsoever. He had flat nose, Mediterranean skin, a square jaw. He was wearing a red sash and a white robe, and he had important papers. <laughs> and he was directly across from the history of the Borscht Belt. <laughs> and 
And the expression on his face to me just read, Jews. I found that offensive. But then you make your way to the Garden of Eden. This is the important room. Because by this point, you should be pretty well mind-fucked. <laughs> the horrible thing is that you see parents with children encouraging them to take this shit in, and you think, where is child services when you make it? <laughs> but the Garden of Eden was pretty spectacular. The Garden of Eden was beautiful. You walk in, there's animal noises. It's big, it's a garden. It's beautiful. Animals, just Adam. It's a... Uh, it's the pre-Eve Eden, so it's idyllic. <laughs> no problems. <laughs> I'm not sexist. It's in the Bible. <laughs> Which is sexist. But you walk in and the first animal you see there in the back of the garden, Eden, it's a grizzly bear, it's a grizzly bear. Why not? God's weird with his choices. It's a classic taxidermy grizzly bear up on its hind paunches, is that what you say, on its haunches? With his hands like this, with the, uh, you know, like you see in, you know, weird old places when you travel across country. You know. Curio shops. So there's a grizzly bear, there's an antelope. I don't know. <laughs> Over here, some deer. In the middle sits Adam, alone holding a white lamb, which is either to foreshadow Christ or he's fucking it. <laughs> Either one possible in pre-Eve Eden. <laughs> but here's what happens, man. Here's where they start to... So you move past Adam, and just to the left of Adam, a single white penguin. <laughs> Doesn't matter, that's not the right climate. It's Eden, don't judge, is a penguin. And then I realized this was just a, a, a mental palate cleanser for what's about to happen. Because you said, okay, penguin, you turn the corner, T-Rex, eating a pineapple. And my only thought at that moment was like a pineapple. That doesn't make sense. And I'm like, oh no, they got me! <laughs> and really, because I was so hooked into the narrative of the museum, I was like, I, I, I hope they explain why that carnivorous ancient reptile would be enjoying some vegetable, some fruit. They did. The next room you go into, everything is explained. Apparently, between the fall of man and the flood, those two events erased completely man's ability to reason <laughs> and science's ability to be effective in any way. <laughs> washed away. The great flood washed away science. <laughs> So in the room, the next room, there's some exhibits. It's just really a domestic uh, scene. And there are little information cards explaining what life was like before the fall and what life was like after the fall. What did we lose as people after the fall? What changed? Weird selection of things. <laughs> <laughs> like the first one was, was disease. There was no disease before the fall. But after the fall, viruses and bacteria are like, it's our time. 
<laughs> and then there's only like six of these things. The next one, odd things. The next one was venom. Venom. <laughs> Out of all the things, venom. There was no venomous animals. Snakes, all the things. Bad lizards, harmless. <laughs> After the fall, holy shit. <laughs> Look what our fangs can do. <laughs> They're playing to the kids with this thing. <laughs> no meat eating before the fall. That would explain the pineapple. <laughs> no carnivorous things. That's, that's, a, that's an important detail. That is why people could be like, let's ride the dinosaur. No fear, as long as there's pineapple around. After the fall, fuck it, we're gonna eat these fuckers. <laughs> then there was one that made me understand the entire museum and who they were really gearing their momentum towards. The next information plaque just said, weeds. <laughs> Before the fall of man, there were no weeds. <laughs> the fuck could that plaque be for? <laughs> a guy who looks at that and goes, no way! Every year my yard is full of fucking no weeds! Before, oh, that must have been beautiful. I knew they were fucking evil! The ark, they, they put you inside the ark. They show you how it's constructed, cubits, and, and they, they have men with animatronic things and people building you know, moving things. And Noah's there explaining it. And he, had, he sounded like Count Chocula. Like, he, <laughs> like I, I couldn't understand the accent, but I couldn't help but think that it, there was some anti Semitic theme running. That, like, you know, they're like, well, we gotta have Noah, but he is a Jew, so let's make him scary. The ark was built, you know, like. <laughs> And then they had these, these, these architectural models of the Ark. And this was the, 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 the moment where it was just great to me that, you know, these scale models, like, you know, the building ones, the architects make with little people and like little bushes and things, and they look great. And you're like, you have to lean in, like, look at that detail. So it's the Ark scale model, which I, apparently they're going to build down there. That they're building a, a full scale Ark. I just heard this, and it's true. Because they're, they, they, they're pushing it off as, a, as a, some sort of exhibit, but they're, they're planning. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're on the ramp on the ramp going up to the ark these are little, little animals look at this oh, two giraffes there are two zebras oh, two lions two brontosauruses <laughs> <laughs> but at that point your mind doesn't stop there you're just onto the pigs brontosaurus is on the ark I'm good with that. And some of you are like, there are no brontosauruses. That was not the proper name. Like, I got an email about that. <laughs> that they're not called that. And you know what? I didn't even fucking make note of what they're really called because when I was a kid, it was a brontosaurus. And I think we all know what I'm talking about. I'm not here to do research. My heart is in it and you get the idea. I think that's what we're going for. They don't have to... No species and genus. Whatever. So I guess what I mean to say is that, you know, after the full experience, I, I didn't take a picture. They had a, a, a triceratops with a saddle on it to really, <laughs> that you could sit on and take pictures. But, but I left not angry at them. I'm not angry at the museum, not angry at the people who were there. I, I was sort of elated. I, I felt sort of gloriously embarrassed for our country, but I felt deeply proud to be an American for, for a very weird reason. I was proud to be an American because I realized that what I was standing in the parking lot of could only happen in America. These are our fucking morons and they've done a beautiful thing down here. <laughs>